Minister, over 42,000 older people who have been robbed of their state pension because of the 2012 changes to pension bans and rates uh, made by your party will see absolutely nothing in this bill. Despite total consensus in the House here, and there has been total consensus um, that these changes were wrong, that these changes disproportionately impacted on women, that these changes discriminate against women for either starting work at a young age or taking time out to look after uh, their families and help raise them. And the motion that was um, passed in this House only a few short weeks ago called for the total reversal of the 2012 changes. Um, and this gave these very people um, hope that these changes would be forthcoming. And I, I um, put these points to you this morning at the, 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 the committee um, meeting, uh, Minister. But how much longer do these people have to wait? And there has been mis mixed messages coming out uh, from uh, the government on this, from, from yourself and from uh, the Taoiseach. Um, these older people, when are they going to receive, Minister, the state pension that they actually deserve? Because when it comes to righting wrongs, money is an easy excuse, and it's one that's peddled out all the time. But certainly, it doesn't wash with people. When billions can be found to bail out the banks, when millions can be wasted um, in bringing about Irish water and water charges, and then you know, the complete due turn that government was forced into and the complete waste of millions of taxpayers' money on that, um, when money, money can be spent, €5 million Euro can be spent on a, a PR spin operation uh, by the government, and yet you can't even get a, a straight message in relation to uh, the changes um, and the reversal of, of the 2012 uh, pension cuts. The reality is that you cannot suggest that money is not available uh, to right this wrong, which has impacted on over 42,000 people. And it has to be said, where are Fianna Fáil in all of this? Why didn't they push this issue to be included in this bill? Because it should be in this. Fianna Fáil, last year when, when I brought forward a, a motion in the House, unfortunately Fianna Fáil opposed it. They abstained. Um, and now, after intensive lobbying by older people, they brought about a, a motion. They had an ideal opportunity um, to right the wrongs, get it included in the, the social welfare bill, get it, the, the changes reversed, um, but they, they didn't. Minister, the vast majority of uh, this bill has to be welcomed, and has to be said. The increases in social welfare payments, the continuation of the back-to-work dividend, which was due to close to new entrants from next March, the extension of maternity benefit for mothers of premature babies, among others. But questions have to be asked on other elements of this bill. The renaming of the family income supplement to the working family payment beggars belief. The working family payment that was a cornerstone of Fianna Gael's general election campaign last year turns out to be little more than a name change. The department can promote work all you want but if affordable childcare is not available, then lone parents simply cannot return to work. If zero-hour contracts, low pay and precarious working times and conditions are the only option for lone parents, then they are better off on social welfare. And that is not good. It is not promoting welfare over work, but, Minister, it is the stark reality. Minister, until we have the introduction of a mandatory living wage, family income supplement or the working family payment as it's going to be newly named, give, um, given to low paid workers is essentially a state subsidy to employers. And if those workers were paid a living wage, they would not need so much assistance from the state and the money could be put to better use in other areas. Another element missing in this bill is that while we have uh, still to await the government bill which will, seeks to um, half ban zero hour contracts, nothing either in this bill uh, for these workers, it has to be said. Minister, you have committed time and time again to reducing child poverty. You have said that it is your main priority in your role as Minister. 
and what are you doing to achieve this? Increases in the qualified child payment is a specific measure which directly targets children in low-income households, targets children in poverty or at great risk of poverty. Knowing all of this, Minister, you increase the qualified child payment by a miserable €2. Euro. And this is nowhere near enough, Minister. We need to see specific key actions from this government as to how children are going to be taken out of poverty and consistent poverty at that. And Minister, €2 Euro simply will not do this. Because while government can talk about a growing economy, while you can release statement after statement welcoming uh, the, live in, uh, the fall in the live register figures, what about the 140,000 children living in this state in consistent poverty? What about the majority of lone parents who are deprived, who cannot afford a warm coat for their children, Minister, who cannot afford to heat their own homes? What about the young people who are unreduced job seekers because of nothing more than their age? What is a growing economy doing for these people, Minister? In March of this year, the UN recommended that Ireland establish a maintenance service. Did you read this recommendation, Minister? Minister, are you ignoring the recommendation from the UN? Why are you leaving lone parents at the mercy of a court system that is stressful, costly and time-consuming to seek child maintenance that they are already entitled to? Minister, we need a, a structured and proper child maintenance service that assists and supports lone parents and their children. That is in line with the UN recommendations. Minister, there are over 150,000 people registered as self-employed in this state. However, bogus self-employment is a threat to all workers. It undermines pay and conditions. It undermines workers' rights and, indeed, their security. It gives the whip hand to the most unscrupulous employers. It undermines union organisation and negotiating power. It takes all the risks that are common in construction and in other industries and offloads them onto the shoulders of the very workers. It also smears the many real self-employed people that are out there. Minister, bogus self-employment leads to tax and PRSI losses that harm all workers right across the state. And it has to be said, a Conservative figure of 750,000 um, in employer PRSI is being lost annually, along with a huge reduction in workers' entitlements. And I urge you, Minister, this needs to be addressed, and it needs to be addressed immediately. There are also over 5,000 men and women aged 65 in receipt of job seekers' payments, Minister. Not because they are job seekers, not because they are seeking work either, Minister, because they have been robbed of their state pension for a year. But this rule does not apply to all workers because the discrimination goes beyond it. It has to be said those in the public service are given a special supplementary pension but other workers are not entitled to such accommodation. Instead, they are left without any income for the year unless they sign on to job seekers, receiving a weekly payment that is almost €50 Euro less than they would have been getting in their state pension. So for those who have worked for their whole lives, paid their taxes and paid their pension contributions, the result of all of that is to sign on to job seekers at 65. And in 2021, the pension age moves to 67, and in 2028, it moves up further to 68. Does that mean those who are forced to retire at 65 will remain on job seekers for two years, for three years, Minister? Can I ask what plans are in place to address this serious, serious problem? Because we are waiting on a money message from your, your government to bring forward a piece of legislation, a bill that I brought forward to abolish the mandatory retirement age that would resolve this issue. Um, so can I ask, what are you doing? If you are not forthcoming with the, the, the money message, I would like to hear what plan you have in place. 
Minister, there was absolutely no consultation whatsoever in relation to the increase in the pension age. They simply were not discussed. There was no debate, there was no, devote, no vote, just a decision made with no consideration whatsoever in relation to the consequences. Minister, you have reminded us on many occasions in this House that social protection is about protecting the most vulnerable, except that is if you're a lone parent, if you're a child living in consistent poverty in this state, if you're a pensioner on a reduced state pension, uh, punished for raising her family, if you're a 65-year-old forced onto the dole, if you're a young job seeker, if you're a young person or a person stuck in low pay and precarious employment. But Minister Sinn Féin, we're going to allow this go forward um, to the next stage. Um, into committee, because certainly um, there are positive elements to it. There are other areas that need serious changing, um, and certainly we will be putting forward um, numerous amendments um, to bring forward those changes. But unfortunately, um, members of, of, the, of the opposition cannot bring in um, amendments that have a financial cost on the state, um, and that is a serious problem that we have to work with what we have there, essentially. But certainly, I will be bringing forward numerous uh, amendments, um, and I, I look forward um, to uh, the debate at that stage. Brady, Brady.